only for the fact that I've studied viruses because I left school at 13 and I was told out of virus. So I was quite well up in that area. That's where at the start I was like, I don't believe this is as big as what they're letting on. I do believe it's there. I do believe it's serious for those who have other health conditions. And I do believe people can die from it. I had no doubt about that. But because I had that, again, bit of knowledge, because I spent the time, I was already being aware of, like, there's another agenda here to take a truth Absolutely. and exaggerate it. So this is where I was saying to people, like, I had people chewing me out, going, you're not taking this as serious. I'm like, no, no, no. It's The measures are going to cause a lot more problems than the actual Absolutely. thing itself, even though it is serious. And I think there is better ways of going about it, but they're not being done. What you're describing as well is the scientific method. You're yes. saying, which is exactly how, how I responded, looking at Falling Man from Wuhan, looking at yeah. the images we were fed from Italy, yeah. hearing the things I heard on television, I wasn't particularly terrified, but I just yeah. assumed, I heard it could be a 7.5% fatality rate virus. That was the highest figure I heard. I thought 7.5% will have a pretty big impact on yeah. people, on the society, right? If that really materializes. And I took a kind of worst case analysis, not knowing anything much at the time, thinking, mm -hmm. okay, take it pretty seriously, mm -hmm. think about it. I didn't particularly necessarily want the measures that came in, mm -hmm. but when they came in, I thought, wow, they wouldn't have done this unless, yeah, yeah. you know, they had to. Yeah, sure. But what we do as believers, but also with the scientific method is you, you constantly evaluate. Yes. You look at the data, you take a step back, yeah. you read, you study, you look at everything. And I think as I started to do that, it started a different picture to emerge. And I would say, even with something like what we're doing here, it's a call to anyone who may have a, a different opinion perhaps to what we may share, mm -hmm. just to consider, okay, maybe you've had a different opinion, but would you be prepared to have another look at some of the data, have another think about things, and maybe just validate that you're absolutely comfortable with where things are mm -hmm. epidemiologically and ethically and even theologically, and make sure that you've checked in and yeah. you've, you've refreshed and you've, you've just done a bit of due diligence. That would be my Absolutely. advice. And, and people have forgotten that a lot of the sciences were done by people of faith. You know, they, they were imbued with a sense of curiosity as to how things were created. They wanted to understand. You know, there is this false dilemma that's always put, you know, like, you know, belief, faith and science. They're, you, they can't mingle and they're one's against the other. And it's like, this is you know historically invalid you know it's yes there is individuals who are like that but it you know a lot of them were believers in a god um and again they were motivated by understanding the process in which a god did things so unfortunately i believe that a lot of that has been lost in the body of christ and especially in the likes of america and different things there is a an anti-intellectual and anti-scienceness that has come through sadly uh, and a lot of it's very emotional, a lot of it's very, you know, hyped. And people just have a tendency to blanket everyone like that. Yeah. Broad stroke, tar and feather. Yeah. But again, because they haven't been encouraged to think. Watch and listen for free on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can also follow us on Telegram and Facebook for more information.